Hey guys, this is Michael from Conquer Chemistry. In today's video, we'll be going over how to balance combustion reactions and working through practice problems. So we're going to start by going over the steps, then we'll work through five different type of combustion reaction practice problems. And then by the end of it, you should be able to do any combustion reaction balancing questions on your homework or your tests. So what exactly is a combustion reaction, first of all? A combustion reaction, it's essentially you're burning something. So the reactants that typically are in a combustion reaction, you have a hydrocarbon. What a hydrocarbon is, is just a, com a compound that contains carbon and hydrogen. I'm putting X and Ys here to represent there could be different numbers of carbon and different number of hydrogens. Sometimes you might also have oxygens involved. And you're going to be reacting that with oxygen gas because you need oxygen to burn things. Typically, if you have carbon, then it's going to produce carbon dioxide. And then if you have hydrogen, it'll produce water. That's typically what you'll see in a combustion reactions, but other times there could be nitrogen or it could be sulfur, so it'll produce other products. The steps are balancing combustion reaction. You first start by balancing the carbons. Next, you balance the hydrogens. If you have any other elements besides oxygen, like nitrogen or sulfur, then you balance those elements. Then you balance your oxygens. And then lastly, if you have a fraction in your reaction, then you're going to multiply all the coefficients by 2 to get rid of the fraction. Don't worry, this all makes sense as we go through the five problems together. To get the most out of this video, you might want to try pausing the video, working through the questions on your own first, and then resuming the video to see how it's done. So let's take a look at this first example. We start by balancing the carbon. So let's take a look at how many carbons we have on the left and how many carbons we have on the right. We have three carbons on the left. We have one carbon on the right. I want to make it so then I have the same number of carbons on both sides. So I put a three in front because this three times one will give me three carbons. Now that the carbons are balanced, let's take a look at the, the number of hydrogens. There are eight hydrogens on the left. There are two on the right. So I need to put a 4 right here because 4 times 2 will give me 8. So then now the hydrogens are balanced on both sides. There aren't any other elements besides carbon and hydrogen other than oxygen here. So then I could jump into balancing the oxygens. Let's take a look at the oxygens. How many oxygens do we have on the right-hand side? In CO2, I have a total of 6 oxygens because 3 times 2 is 6. In H2O, I have a total of 4 oxygens because 4 times 1 is 4. Add them together and I have a total of 10 oxygens on my right hand side. That means I need 10 oxygens on my left hand side. And 10 divided by 2 gives us 5. So I get 5O2. And that is the balanced chemical reaction. You can also write a 1 right here if you want to. Let's take a look at the next example. Again, we start with the carbons. I have 5 carbons on the left, 1 carbon on the right. So put a 5 right here to balance the number of carbons. Move on to the hydrogens next. We have 12 hydrogens on the left, 2 on the right. Put a 6 right here because 6 times 2 gives us 12. Then moving on to the oxygens. Let's take a look at how many oxygens we have on the right hand side. In carbon dioxide, we have 5 times 2, so that gives us 10 oxygens. In water, we have 6 times 1, so it gives us 6. So that means in total here, we have 16 oxygens. Then we can take a look at the left-hand side, and we have to have 16 oxygens on the left-hand side. So 16 divided by 2 will give us 8. Next problem. This, time, this one's a little bit different because in this hydrocarbon, we also have oxygen. And that's going to change the way we approach the problem a little, slightly. You'll see. We'll start with the carbons. We have three carbons on the left, one on the right, so we'll put the three right here. Then take a look at the hydrogens. We have eight hydrogens on the left, two on the right. So I have to put a four in front of this because four times two gives us eight. Now let's, let's take a look at the oxygens. On the right-hand side, carbon dioxide, we're going to have three times two is six, four times one is four, so that means we have total of 10 oxygens on the right hand side. We have two oxygens on uh, uh, oxygens in two different compounds on the left hand side. You don't want to com combine them and try to find a common multiple. 
we want to keep this, if you have this a scenario like this, you want to keep the hydrocarbon coefficient a one for now. Why is that? Because if we change the coefficient of the hydrocarbon, then that's going to change the number of carbon and, and hydrogen. So that means I'm going to have to change these coefficients as well. So I'm going to keep this a one. We might have to change it later on, but for now, let's keep this a one. If I keep the coefficient of this as one, it means that this compound is going to be contributing one oxygen because one times one is one. In total, we want 10 oxygens because we have 10 oxygens on the right, so we have to have 10 on the left. That means that O2 has to contribute 9 because 1 plus 9 gives us 10. So then what number can we put here to, to give us 9? Well, we can do 9 divided by 2, and that would be our coefficient. But then we have a fraction. So we have a fraction with do step 5. We have to multiply all the coefficients by 2. We do 1 multiplied by 2, that gives us 2. 9 over 2 multiplied by 2, that just gets rid of the 2, so this would just be 9. 3 times 2 is 6, and then 4 times 2 is 8. Next question. Very similar to the, to the previous one. Let's start with the carbons. We have 3 carbons on the left, so put 3 carbons over here. We have 6 hydrogens on the left. Two on the right, so I put a three right here. Now balancing the auctions, see how many auctions I have on this side. Three times two is six. Three times one is three. So that means we have nine auctions on this side. Again, we have auctions in multiple reactants here. So let's put a one in front of the hydrocarbon for now. That means that the hydrocarbon is going to contribute one auction. In total, we want nine. So that must mean that the O2 has to contribute 8. And then 8 divided by 2 is 4. And the reason why we do that is because 4 times 2 gives us 8 auctions. So then we have 1 plus 8, and we have 9 auctions on the left, 9 on the right, so all the elements are balanced. Let's take a look at this last example. This last one looks really complicated because we have larger numbers and we have other elements, but we just take the same approach. We'll start with the carbons. We have 21 carbons on the left, a one carbon on the right. So I put a 21 right here to balance the number of carbons. Then we take a look at the hydrogens. We have 24 hydrogens on the left, two on the right. So then we put a 12 right here because 12 times two is 24. This time I have another element that's not carbon, hydrogen, or oxygen, and that's nitrogen. So I'm gonna do that next. We have two nitrogens on this side one nitrogen on this side, so I have to put a two right here. Lastly, we balance the oxygen. So let's take a look at how many oxygens I have on the right-hand side. For the CO2, it's 21 times two, which is gonna be 42. For the H2O, it's 12 times one, so that's 12. And then for the NO2, it's two times two, which is four. Now add those numbers together, and that will be 58 oxygen oxygens on the right hand side. So it must mean I have to have 58 oxygens on the left hand side. We have oxygen in multiple reactants again. So let's put a one in front of the hydrocarbon. That must mean that the hydrocarbon is contributing four times four times one oxygen. So this was going to contribute four oxygens. In total we want 58. So that must mean that the O2 has to contribute 54 because 58 minus four is 54. Now then, to figure out the coefficient here, we just do 54 divided by 2, and that is 27. And there you have it. That's how you approach balancing combustion reactions. Just follow those steps, and you should be able to do almost any combustion balancing problems on your quiz, tests, and homework. If you want to learn how to ace chemistry. If you want to learn what's the best way to study for this class, if you want to learn some neat tricks and tips to take into your exam and do better on them, then you should head over to my website and get this free guide, uh, 12 Secrets to Acing Chemistry. You can head over to www.conquerchemistry.com slash chemsecrets. I'm going to include a link in the description below. Check it out. I think it's really going to help you and you're going to, you're going to like it. Until next time, keep working hard and continue the good work.